Hello, kings, queens, nerds, and geeks, and happy holidays. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate back home. I hope you, all those of you who have families are spending great time with them. And those of you who don't have families to spend time with, I hope your Christmas is blessed too. Guys, um, this it's Christmas Eve. This video will be posted on Christmas Eve. I'm recording this the day before, so don't mind that. Um, but... Um, I decided to do a Hearts Warming Eve fanfiction video, guys, because I figured it's about that time of year, you know, you, it's about that time of year where snuggles and cuddles and all that stuff, as, you know, the snowman from, uh, from, uh, <laughs> the snowman from, uh, from, uh, I forgot the movie, uh, Frozen says, winter is a good time for cuddles, so, and I think we all should have like, try to find somebody, you know, around this Christmas. Even if you're alone this Christmas, get out there. Try to find somebody who's alone on Christmas and spend it with them. Even of those who so the army even says this, that if you're, it's one of the worst times to be alone around the year, especially for soldiers. And there are soldiers here that, that are going to be alone on Christmas. So I encourage everyone out there who are watching this right now, please, if you're alone on Christmas, Find somebody else who is alone on Christmas too, and spend time with their er, a Christmas with them. You don't have to exchange gifts; just have a few drinks or have a few laughs, watch some Netflix, something. Enjoy the enjoy the how this Grinch stole Christmas. That's my advice to you guys. Well, anyway, so we're gonna be doing a hearts warming fanfic. Uh, it's a comedy, and let me see. Um, and it's and it's. It's posted here by Gaturu Serenade. I don't know who this is, but I decided to do it, and it's going to be great. So hold on, let me uh, change the camera. Okay, um, so here we are. Uh, let's get started, shall we? The cheer of Hearth's Warming Eve had filled Starlight Glimmer with a rosy, warm feeling which was not something she experienced often. Actually, that should be amended. Starlight had memories of many Hearthswimming Eves back in her hometown, before the whole fiasco with Sunburst. Currently, Twilight's pupil was engaged in a conversation with a fuchsia pony who had downed 15 glasses of eggnog. Are you sure you're all right, Berry Punch? Starlight asked the mayor cautiously. Well then. Never been better. <laughs> Warming is such a great holiday. <laughs> it just doesn't seem healthy. Starlight started. However, Barry promptly vomited all over Twilight's expensive carpet. Oh god. Drink that much eggnog. Starlight finished, flattening her ears against her head. Oh god. I'll get a broom. Thanks. <laughs> Barry stuttered before she gulped down another frothy helping of eggnog. Oh my god, so why? the mug away from her and left to find a broom. Guys. Guys, alcoholic warning. Don't, don't, drink responsibly, guys. Oh god. I don't even drink that much. Oh god. I can't, I can't even drink that much. I get drunk after like, what, six shots? No, no, I get drunk after three shots and seven shots is my limit. So. As she cleaned up Barry Punch's bile, Starlet's thoughts flew to the story Twilight had narrated to her earlier. Interesting that Snowfall Frost was described as a gifted wizard, yet I've never read anything about her in textbooks. And her assistant was a pegasus, not a unicorn. Wouldn't the latter be more useful as an assistant in the field of magical study? Starlight, having mopped up the mess as best as possible, went to go fetch Spike. He would probably know better where to put the mop. She found him chatting with Fluttershy, and politely asked him to help her find the laundry room. Spike? Starlight remarked as they walked down the corridor on the opposite end of the castle. Did anything seem... strange to you about a heart swarming tale? Uh, no? Spike shrugged and sucked on the candy cane he was holding. Twilight's read it to me every year since we moved to Ponyville. It sounded the same as usual. Why? I was thinking about it, Starlet answered, pushing open the laundry room door. And don't you think the characters' names are a little similar to our friends' names? 
I mean, Snow Dash and Flutter Holly, for instance, are definitely Rainbow and Fluttershy, though Mary and Rarity are a bit of a stretch. Probably just a coincidence. Spike chuckled as he wrung out the mop. Hey, do you think Dwy needs to know about the carpet? I'll tell her tomorrow, when the festivities are over. Starlight assured him. And another thing, the description of the spirits. A transparent earth pony sporting pigtails and a country accent? A pink-coated pony with fuzzy hair and a cheerful grin? That sounds like Applejack and Pinkie Pie to me. What's your point, Starlight? Spike asked, leaning against the door. Are you trying to say that our friends are characters? I like how... What's next? No, 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 I, I have to say this right now. Um, because typically, um... Typically, in the show, when they have, um... What's the word? When they're having a Christmas special or anything, they pr they generally use the same characters to have less voice acting, you know? Um... In this case, yeah, that's one of the things. I think that's what they're trying to point out with this fanfiction. <laughs> I find that hilarious. They're in a movie? That's ridiculous. Any movie made about you guys would be met with negative reception. Tell the sequel justified it. And they'd get half the details wrong. They'd probably make Applejack a unicorn by accident. Oh my god. They're making a shit- <laughs> I get it. They're shitting on people who make t movies out of old TV, out of TV shows. Oh god, or books, you know? Like, if they made a movie of the real life thing, they'd probably edit it to make it more different. That's what they're, they're doing. Because they do that with video games, books, real life events. Like, that happens. And they're just shitting on movie, uh, movie producers at this point, or uh, script writers. Anyways, I guess I'm just being a little critical. A smidgen too much eggnog. Starlight sighed and offered Spike a sheepish smile. Ah, I see. See you later, Starlight! With a final wave, the little dragon disappeared into the crowd of party guests. <laughs> Starlight chuckled to herself. By tomorrow, she'd have this all figured out. She always did. I just realized she's moving. I, I just noticed that Starlight's moving partially to the right. I like, holy shit! I didn't. I just noticed that. Like she's moving partially to the right. The next morning, Starlight crept out of her room and through the castle. The vicinity's silence unsettled her, since mere hours before, ponies had been celebrating loudly. <sighs> Excuse me. Starlight yawned as she walked into the library. A certain purple pony was already inside. Good morning, Starlight. Twilight looked up from the book she was reading. <laughs> Happy day after heartswarming. Thanks, Twilight. You too. What you reading? Hmm? Oh, oh, <laughs> nothing. Twilight casually tucked a bookmark in to hold her place and closed her book back side up. Is there anything I can do for you, Starlight? Spike hasn't burnt the toast again, has he? No, the kitchen's safe. Starlight answered, brushing her mane out of her eye. I was thinking about a heartwarming tale last night, and I wondered if you could maybe tell me a little bit about it? What do you want to know? Twilight asked, her ears flicking curiously. Well, who's the author, for one? Starlight said, shifting in her seat. And why are all the characters reminiscent of ponies that I know in real life? <laughs> Snow Dash? Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, Flutter Holly, me. I get it. Twilight interrupted, grinning so widely, Double Diamond would have been jealous. The author is listed as an esteemed pony named uh, Sunset Shimmer. As for the characters, <laughs> that's just a coincidence. Never really struck me as odd. Anything else? You're kidding me, right? You're kidding me, right? Yet again, all yeah, again, it's it has been noticed that Twilight, Sparkle, Starlight, Glimmer, and Sunset Shimmer have similar names. Like seriously, the last sentence came out too fast. In fact, in sorry, sorry. Um, in fact, even in the show, they pointed this out when um, in the Queen of Dragons, I forgot her fucking name, Ember. There you go. Um, when Ember pointed out that these two are very similar. 
They're both purple ponies. They both have similar cutie marks, and their names are even similar. She's pointed that out. Like, holy shit. Asked. Uh, Barry Punch kind of threw up on your carpet yesterday. <laughs> what? Twilight was thrown into full panic mode. Why didn't any pony tell me yesterday? What if Princess Celestia stops by for a surprise visit? In a burst of sparkles, Twilight left the library in a frantic dash to the foyer. Detective time, Starlight muttered. She scanned the bookshelf and, to her delight, found the book of interest. Starlight snatched it off the bookshelf and flipped it open to the first page. A heartwarming tale by Twilight Sparkle? Twilight wrote this? Knowing Twilight could come back at any moment, Starlight began flipping through the pages frantically. A sentence towards the end caught her eye. Snowfall Frost ran a hoof through her straight indigo mane. Ah, Snowfall is Twilight, then. Well, that clears this all up. She read through the rest of the page, which Twilight had neglected to include the previous night. Snowfall felt ecstatic even after she had been such a jerk. Snowdash would let her into her house and her heart. That night, she discovered one of the best heartswarming gifts is a good kiss? Starlight, I cleaned up. Starlight looked up like a foal caught stealing cookies. You're rereading that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the jig's up, Twilight! Starlight exclaimed, pointing an accusatory hoof towards her mentor. You wrote this, not Sunset, Glitter, or whoever. Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm a very gifted writer. Most normal ponies don't write fanfiction of their friends. Actually, a lot of ponies do. Oh my god. And publish that fanfiction? Touché. And They're shitting on fanfic writers in a fanfic! <laughs> oh my god, I'm crying. I'm literally crying. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Did I ever. I, I think I've said this before, but how me and my wife are together is because basically our friends shipped us, and that's basically what happened. Although, it was about six months of rejection because I did have a crush on my wife, and I. Chased her for about six months until she finally said yes. So, yeah. It's called persistence, guys. You can get out of the friend zone. In fairness, it was only published for a couple of years before I became a princess. Then I had to pull all the books off the shelves because my name was too, uh, well known. And it didn't occur to you that your friends might buy these books. Twilight shrugged helplessly. I happen to know that none of my friends read the genre I specialize in. Sci-fi parodies. This is just a holiday special. Starlight nearly dropped the book. Dear Celestia, you mean there's more? Twilight held up the book she had been reading when Starlight walked in. I have the surviving copies of all my works. Fluttering and sparkling hearts. Starlight oh rolled her eyes. Real original, Twilight. I'll let you read some, if you don't tell the others. <laughs> Starlight blanched. She then leaned in and murmured. I'll take all the twi-dash fix you have. My god. They are! Oh, the voices are done by Magpie and Ashley H. Oh my god, I love those guys. Uh, oh, gals, sorry. Gals. Uh, if you guys are okay with that. Oh, oh my god, that was a pretty good fanfic. Um, I think I shall do another one since I have a lot of time, so I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, this one is called A Heart Swarming Carol. Don't mind this, I don't know what the hell that is. But it's, and it's read by, uh, Toe Own Shift or Sh uh, Shij Aramaz, uh, I guess that's how it is, tone shift, um, I don't know who the fan fiction's by, because it didn't say, I think, all right, uh, hold on, let me find out, uh, uh, doesn't say so far, link to the story at fanfiction.net, okay, uh, I'll, I'll probably check that out later, but anyway, let's uh, get on with the, the, the fan fiction, shall we?
Hello and welcome back. I managed to score a veritable bounty of sweets and snacks today. Gingerbread colts, candy canes, hot chocolate cupcakes, cookies. <sighs> Sugar Cube Corner is having quite the sale, you see. And you don't care where I got the food, do you? Fair enough. All right. I like Tonight's the role story play. is another sweet one, and it explains its message loud and clear at the end. So let's not waste any time with my take on it, all right? Go ahead, get comfortable. Ready? Then let's begin. A Hearth Swarming Carol by Not Enough Coffee. Not Enough Coffee, there we go. Silver clouds lined the sky, gleaming like the fresh snow on the ground, their thick puffs blocking the sun's warming rays. All the animals were in their burrows, hibernating for winter. The air was frigid, and all of Ponyville was out and about. The ponies Hold on, I like the image here. I have to. I'm gonna say this right now. I like the image. You see, uh, Lyra looking crazy as fuck. You see Barry he punched in the back with another fucking thing of eggnog, and also you also see um, Octavia looking confused and do doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. And then you see uh, Octavia like, hey, 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 pretty thing. Seriously. Seriously, I love this image. It just says so much. Why do I want to cry? I'm very emotional around this time of year, guy. Doing last-minute hearth-swarming shopping. Octavia admired all of this as she sat in Town Square, Vinyl and Lyra next to her. She held a book of hearth-swarming sheet music, trying to get a feel for the holiday music before caroling throughout the town. Still, the freezing cold world around her did a little to help her concentrate. Scooting closer to Vinyl, Octavia tried to gather in as much warmth from her as possible. Hmm? Vinyl let out, wrapping a hoof around Octavia. Cold, are we? Well, you're not the only one, Tavi. Vinyl laughed before continuing. Quite the winter they have this year. I swear, those weather pegs I make it worse every year. I think they have it out for us, with how much we complain about the weather. Instead of replying, Octavia just chose to snuggle closer, her hoodie doing little to stave off the chilling air. This only prompted Vinyl to rest her head on top of Octavia's, making ponies that walked by look on with interest at the intimate moment the two shared. Hmm. <coughs> Lyra coughed, getting the attention of the two lovebirds. Don't we have some musical arranging that needs to be done? She asked rhetorically. Heartswarming Eve only comes once a year, you know, so we should really get this show on the road. There was a silence for a second before a soft whine and whimper could be heard. Yes, I suppose you're right, Lyra. Octavia grumbled as she parted from her lover's embrace. Oof, oof, at least let me fetch some more clothes to wear. It's unbearable out here. Sighing, she looked back to the sheet music in front of her though her focus was still drawn to finding some way to fight back against Winter's icy grip. I don't know about you guys, but I think it'd be pretty cool if we tried something a little different this year, Lyra stated, giving Octavian Vinyl a toothy grin. Like, we do the same thing every year, so why not try something a little different? Yeah, I feel you there. What'd you have in mind? Vinyl asked in her turn. She set down her sheet music on the bench they sat on, and the action followed by Octavia as they both found their interest peaked. <laughs> well, as you know, I was in a jazz ensemble when I was affiliated. Lyra started, but was interrupted by the groans of Octavia. Um, sorry? Not to be rude or anything, but I'm not sure jazz really sets the mood for the holidays. When I think of snow and cheer, my mind doesn't drift to brass instruments and bass guitar. I think more of flutes and softer things. Something like a warm blanket to wrap yourself in from the cold. Though I may be projecting here. <laughs> Octavia hugged herself tighter. I think we should encapsulate the feeling more than have a funky tune. I agree. Well, but we do that every year, Octavia. A change of pace is needed. Lyra continued to push her idea. What do you say, Vinyl? Octavia looked towards Vinyl with a pout as she saw her face contorted to a grimace. Don't tell me you want to bring some of your wubs to the holiday. Sorry to say, Tavi, but she does have a point. And besides, I do actually want to get some of my wubs into the holiday. The kids will love it. Trust me, they're into it. 
I know exactly what we could do. Make some of your tunes with my turntable. Uh... Put on a show in the center of town. Vinyl all but jumped in excitement. Or we could be much more personal and go door to door singing the classics. You have a real nice singing voice, Vinyl, and I'll have you know... I mean, Lyra could play her lyre as we do a duet for every pony, and Caroling would certainly sit the mood. Octavia felt herself instinctively move closer to her mate. <laughs> oh, oh, Tavi. Vinyl rubbed the back of her neck as she felt a blush begin to set on her face. I appreciate that. Really, I do. But we should mix things up a little bit, like Lyra said. Vinyl frowned as she saw the peeved look Octavia gave her. Don't be like that. I thought it was a good idea, honest. I just... Uh, I think with how music has begun to shift... Hold on, I just noticed. Why the fuck are you wearing sunglasses in the middle of winter? Two, why are they above your horn? They're above the horn. I just noticed that. Completely unrelated that I had to say that. Shift over the years, returning to a tradition such as this isn't such a bad thing. Octavia got up from her seat, getting a good head above Vinyl and Lyra. I think maybe we should honor this, much like how Ponyville honors winter wrap-up traditions every year. I don't think that's a very fair comparison, Octavia. I'd like to think that music is a little more malleable. Though I do agree we shouldn't use EDM as a way to express the holiday spirit. No offense, Vinyl, but I think it'd be too harsh of a sound. What? Are you kidding? Vinyl shouted. You gotta be kidding. Because EDM is more than just loud noises. There are different genres, you know? Vinyl felt herself growing as heated as her mare friend from the backhanded comment. I can make a festive mix. You'll see. Lara stood up with the two of them, all three effectively all on an even <coughs> playing field. As they had themselves a stare down, ponies that were once carrying out their business began to stop and look upon the scene. It was a small crowd, but it was enough to grab the attention of the three ponies. What are you all looking at? Octavia asked all the ponies around her and her friends. This conversation doesn't concern you. That's not a very heartwarming attitude to have, lady. A stallion yelled back, making Octavia turn red with fury. Vinyl put herself in front of Octavia before she could do anything rash, looking back at her before giving the stallion a piece of her mind. Hey, she's right. This is none of your business. Still, happy horse swarming and all, but could we please have our privacy? Octavia walked up beside her guardian. Vinyl, I'm not a little filly anymore. You don't need to speak for me. <sighs> you do this all the time, and honestly, it's a bit annoying. In the heat of the moment, she didn't see Vinyl visibly deflate at her comment as she paid more attention to the crowd. But I was only trying to help, Tavi. Vinyl said weakly. I understand, but I'd like it if I could fight my own battles. I know you're only trying to protect me, but sometimes it's just a bit much, love. Octavia replied, turning her look to Vinyl. She was no longer concerned with how cold it was outside, as her mood shift was creating enough heat to bypass the feeling. Not gonna lie, that was rather rude, Lyra added, no longer playing a role as a bystander. You could at least say sorry. Our relationship is none of your business, snapped Octavia as she began to walk away. <laughs> Come, Vinyl. I'm sure we can arrange something worthwhile if it's just the two of us. B but can't we all just work together on this? Vinyl asked in a pleading voice, hesitantly taking a step towards Octavia. <laughs> Apparently not, Lyra huffed, she too beginning to make her way through the mass of ponies. Vinyl then watched as the crowd grew grumpier with gossip before they all left as well, their minds plagued with sour thoughts. Octavia found herself walking faster than she thought, as she almost shoved the ponies in her way onto the ground as she passed them by. She was so angry, so full of spite, that everything around her turned into a blur. She had no idea where exactly she was even going and was just walking for the sake of it all. Snow began to fall from the sky. As the sun set in the horizon, the world was greeted with an orange glow from the sunset, and it cast a resplendent hue onto the snow below. It was almost like staring into a painting, more so than an actual event taking place. 
It got Octavia to slow her pace and just admire the view. <sighs> she rubbed the bridge of her snout, trying to rid out any last frustration she was feeling. Closing her eyes, she then shook her head rapidly, and the snow that had landed atop her head went flying in all directions. <sighs> the nerve, Octavia murmured quietly to herself. I can't believe she put into my personal relationship problems. She looked out at the horizon and felt a compulsion to chase the sun just then. Not one to deny such a feeling, she indulged it and began to walk again, this time with a goal in mind. Catch the sun before it faded away. Each step felt therapeutic, in a way. It was like the stress she felt was being washed down her legs as she kept pushing on. Now, time seemed to move by at a quicker pace than she was able to move, the sun already dipping lower and lower. She knew she had to move fast if she were to have a chance at holding the shining orb in her hooves. So her walk became a sprint as she made her way out of town. In the name of Celestia! Octavia shouted as she made it to the edge of town, the sun no longer in sight, and the street lamps lighting up to fill the darkness left in its wake. She sighed and walked across the bridge that left town anyway, taking a look over the edge to see her reflection in the creek below. Something was missing. She knew it within her being that something should have been there, right next to her, but she couldn't quite figure out what. She gasped. Of course. She looked away from her reflection and began walking back into town, knowing exactly where she was heading. How could I have been so thoughtless? She breathed airily as she harshly criticized her own actions. Vinyl deserves better than that. I shouldn't have been so stubborn. As she kept pushing forward to town square when she left Vinyl, the sound of an angelic lyre graced her ears, lulling her into a blissful contentment. She followed the familiar sound, somehow knowing it would lead her to where she wanted to be. Nothing in the world mattered as everything faded from existence. All that was real in her mind was the music and the pony who was playing it. Turning a corner, she saw her mint-coated friend that she argued with before sitting on a bench playing her lyre. The song was unmistakably the heart carol, its sweet tune washing away any stress she had left. Sitting next to her, she hummed along. As the song carried on, the two musicians found themselves attracting a, a small crowd. The same ponies who were left upset from the last time Lyra and Octavia were together, now gathered with smiles plastered over their faces. When the song came to an end, Lyra was the one who decided to break the ice. So, I guess this is the part where we apologize. Because I'm real sorry about what happened earlier. It's no way to act on Hearthswarming Eve. Likewise. I was being too stubborn for my own good. Octavia looked around. Say, you don't happen to know where Vinyl went off to, do you? She asked, getting more antsy the longer she was separated from her special sun pony. No need to ask, Tavi. I'm over here, called Vinyl. <laughs> the sweet tunes you guys are playing and figured I'd find you guys back here. And yeah, I feel you guys. I feel sorry myself. Vinyl was pushing a portable turntable through the ponies surrounding Octavia and Lyra. <laughs> Octavia bolted from where she was sitting and tackled Vinyl into the ground. Oh, you have no idea how sorry I am, love. Truly, I was being so mean earlier. I have no idea what came over me. <sighs> Perhaps the stress of the holidays finally caught up to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I just kind of some idea how sorry you are, Tabby. Vino planted a small kiss on top of Octavia's head, eliciting a shared aww from the crowd of ponies. <laughs> now get off me, goofball, so we can get caroling for these ponies already. Octavia did as Vino said, and even helped her off the ground below. I want to cry. Vino went one off to one side of the bench and fully established her setup there, making sure everything was in working order. Uh, uh, there she goes. Uh, flips, uh, 
I'm not sure how well I can sing while I'm making the beats flow, but I can sure try my hardest. Figured we'd, you know, do the duet you mentioned earlier while Lyra over here continues her wicked skills on her lyre. Lyra nodded her head in response, plucking a couple of strings to add onto Vinyl's point. Octavia beamed. Hmm, say, I just had a thought of my own. Turning to the sea of ponies that surrounded them, she smiled. How about we all join in on this caroling? Uh, we'll play some of our own, but you can throw in a few of your own favorites as well. Octavia was greeted with a loud cheer. It was all she needed to know that it got every pony excited and feeling that holiday spirit. And soon enough, Octavia found herself standing in the center between Vinyl and Lyra, preparing herself with the sheet music Lyra had given to her. Breathing in, she began to sing. Backed by the sound of an electric symphony and the gentle melody of a lyre, it all melted together into a splendid mixture of sounds that was like candy for the ears of all the ponies present. It just... It just fit. And that's what mattered in the end. Every pony was together with those they cared for most, singing and having the time of their lives. It carried on into the night, no pony wanting to leave for the life of them. It was like a slice of heaven, and nothing could break the happiness that welled inside all of their chests. Our swarming eve that year was going to be one to remember for years to come. Octavia found that even those closest to you will get on your nerves from time to time. But coming together as loved ones through the thick of it was what heartswarming was all about. And the fire of friendship that sparked the holiday to begin with continued its yearly cycle. Hmm. That was nice. It really was. Oh, I can hear my wife playing Sims in the other room. Well, anyway. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this very Merry Christmas. And I hope you all enjoy your Christmas back home. So, anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Merry Christmas. And for my br brony friends out there, happy hearts for me. Bye, guys.